This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, and we are ready to get into it here with us. First of us, first of all, in studio, Katie Hewis is with us. The Nutters. Hi, look at my deformed water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the it cold froze. is. Like, wait a minute, it's been at like 45 today. I guess that wasn't enough, huh? Uh, no, it froze on the way back from. Or at some point during state college visit. Oh, over and the then weekend, it yeah. Thawed and you know, yeah. Science. She's the sales and marketing director, director of sales and marketing at the scare house. Oh, She's got a You look at you wearing a uniform and everything I today. Am. I'm so fancy. You're so you're so branded. I know. It's scary. <laughs> this is the first time I put clothes on all day besides pajamas. Oh, <laughs> we 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 pulled you out of the uh, <laughs> out of the house. I see. Yes, just all, for you. Also with us on the line is. The gadget guru over at Big Bank International is John Tuchillo joining us from Studio C today over in the Big D Dormont. How's it going? <clears throat> it, it, it's interesting seeing Katie behind you on my Hangouts feed mm-hmm. is actually 10 seconds behind me watching the feed on Facebook. That's, <laughs> wait a minute so oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like i must get like a 20 second lag i think we get i i swear everything i throw up on the google hangout is like extra lag right like i can't watch any wrestling live wrestling and look at twitter because i will be <laughs> like i'll have like a a spoiler alert from like a minute ahead and like hmm. it does like it, it, whether it be a pay-per-view on the network or uh feed through like usa network app like it, it just it never fails so but but what's weird is we're the the feed behind you up on the big TV is the Facebook feed, right? Yes. So my Facebook feed is about twelve to fifteen seconds behind your Facebook feed, which is like fifteen seconds behind real life. That's great. Uh, I'm from living far, far in the past. <laughs> Greetings from the past. Yes. Uh, but anyways, this is the awesome cast, and we have a new mic'd up person on here to yell at me when I forget her at the end of the show. Yay. Producer Missy has a mic. Hi, guys. Hey. He's still trying to work on getting me a camera, and I'm fighting it desperately, but yeah, we'll, we'll go with the mic for right now. We, we're eager some new cords. She has a mic. She has uh, uh, the headphones to make sure she can she can hear Chilla, or more more precisely uh, people when we have too many people in here on Wrestling Mayhem Show, but still, welcome. And now she can chime in anytime she wants, and we'll actually hear her. So... What was the di- what was the cord distance you ended up needing? Because I know we were going back and forth on that last week. I bought twenty five feet, and it wasn't enough. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, just barely, just barely. I, I um, had thirty in the cart, and he sh- he, he got the. 25s. I didn't realize they were in the cart, and I just threw some new ones out. Oh, Katie has successfully opened her chilled water. <laughs> it didn't explode. Didn't explode. Yay! Yay! Yay. I would just tell people uh, on the next show, you know, on wrestling just let them know that i tinkled on the couch if i would have spilled it i won't tell them (laughs) um it would just be badger Mm. yeah i'll just be honey badger she'll be be like oh somebody marked this yep uh anyways this is the awesome cast you can check out everything at awesomecast.com where you can subscribe to the show and uh and 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 see the latest and see all the the past shows and awesome chats and everything like that hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com tweet us at awesomecast and uh the awesomecast facebook page where we do go live every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern uh over there and of course streaming as well on other sorgatron media platforms twitch periscope youtube and whatnot and uh if you guys are over there the chat room is over at the uh awesome cast uh facebook page that we are paying attention to this evening so please go check us out over there um if my my thing kind of works uh here <laughs> i'm trying to pull the chat back up facebook has been weird it's been thrown like 
videos in the corner and then not letting me open more videos but on the iPhone. But we'll, we'll get you guys back into there. Also, uh, we are streaming at RiversEdgePGH.com Saturdays at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And over on the West Coast, the 405Media.com are carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time, if you want to catch up on the latest episode of the Awesome Cast. And um, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast that are helping support the show here every week, including at the Coffee Club $5 Matt Weller over at the other end of the state, as well as uh, John Diggy DeGore and our friend at the fan of the show, a $1 level, Michael Fedor, supporting us for a good long time. You guys can support the show, too, if you find value in this over at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week let's start it off katie talked me into a new podcast yes I, I, and we started listening i i listened to the first episode okay i will probably be continuing yes uh, tell us about what this is okay it's the butterfly effect with john ronson and a lot of times we talk about pornhub myself particularly on the show because of what you know essentially porn technology has kind of accelerated all of technology and this this podcast, this gentleman decided to start the podcast, and he wanted to see essentially what he called the butterfly effect of free porn. And the first episode goes into how they did the whole tech side of it, like how the whole thing, like how it started by mm-hmm. this guy having this idea. Um, it's actually a kid, and it was a bunch of nerds, and they figured out how to put porn online for free, and then how this free porn, as you get into more episodes, how it affected uh, the people who are producing it, the people acting in it, just like random people that have like just the porn and free porn industry has affected and you can't stop listening. It's definitely not a safe for work on some of these shows. Well, some are worse than others, but it's so good to just like listen to all the effects that mm-hmm. kind of just free porn has, has done for a lot of different people and the impact it's having on society and today it's it's really it's a good engrossing podcast so it's one of those things that may be about you know more than porn i guess Mm -hmm. along the way um but uh you know but but it it starts with porn up so there's kind Mm -hmm. of a there's kind of that hook to it huh yeah and it's and it's interesting because it talks about it's something that i took away from it um was the well what happens when whatever you do is put online for free well, how, how do you essentially move your business forward? How do you make money? Mm-hmm. And one of the episodes explores that, and a lot of it is customization. And essentially, the kind of you know the the, the way do you, how do you have everybody have their own particular experience with whatever you're marketing? You know, your event, your show, your whatever. And so it was like it was definitely like a lot of things like oh wait, this is applicable in real life with this. I enjoyed the, like I liked how they were, they were basically like hey, we really kind of separated the porn part of it from the tech side. They mm-hmm. said you walked into like Pornhub's offices and just looked like Google, Yeah, you know, and, and that's all it was. And, but that, but then they also like acquired a bunch of the companies that were making things and, and basically all their competitors with the red tubes and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, and they like more recently through your stories realized <laughs> that they're all basically the same company and I mm-hmm. guess have been for a good while now. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. And like I said, a lot of this is very much just what they were calling tech nerds. Mm-hmm. And how they just, and it's really interesting, the people who are producing and starring it talk about these tech nerds because of what they did to the business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's it's really good, and I can't stop listening to it. Kind of goes along with that. Um, we had uh, Michelle James over on the Pittsburgh Current mm-hmm. podcast, uh, sitting right where you were sitting now, uh, <laughs> a week ago. And she she's somebody who started on uh, like many cams, and, mm-hmm. and there was another site um, where it was kind of interesting because she's done the main stuff. Uh, where they've like flown her out to LA and, and done things, but but she basically can make a lot of money just from doing it from home mm-hmm. and doing their own stuff. Like it's like really kind of interesting entrepreneurism mm-hmm. uh, going on here, and and seems to be like the the biggest thing of it. It's really interesting because because uh, John goes into this, and I think uh, Scott had mentioned. I think Simmons had said that this was also he was also the guy that did. So you've been publicly shamed. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's kind of goes into these controversial, contra, quote unquote, controversial topics, but he doesn't go into this with judgmental. He's not very, he's not judgmental of the whole process. He's very inquisitive and he wants to learn more and learn more. And, it, and it's really nice because it's never something where he's like, oh, you're a horrible human. And it's it's yeah. very open minded, which is really cool. And again, it's one of those kind of NPR style mm-hmm. things, the, the storytelling interview uh, bits and everything uh, where it was kind of let on. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're into that kind of a, uh, 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 you know, cleaner uh, edit kind of uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's a re- it's a really good one. And 
I usually don't get into those. Yeah. And this one has my attention uh-huh. a little bit, you know. And I don't want, uh, somebody has already ruined this podcast for me with this gentleman's voice. Uh, I mentioned that if you've ever seen the online series um, Salad Fingers. Oh, it's a horror online series. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cre- it's one of the few things that really creeps me out that I can't stand to watch. It's an animated uh, online series horror. It's, it's it's awful. Really? Oh, yeah. It's so weird and creepy. All but right. his voice sounds just like it. And it's like, oh, no, I can't. It took right. me a There's a homework head. assignment. Everybody listening, go check out Salad Fingers and uh, report back to us. Yeah, it's, they're starting to, there's a whole bunch of new episodes coming out. It, it was a thing in, oh, gosh, it's probably been almost 10 years. I think it, at least 10 years since it originally came out. Jeez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's your horror and during the course of that my mom has popped in and john carmen as if oh carmen, as if their ears were burning like oh they're talking about porn we need to be there anyways <laughs> i'm gonna get a text uh <laughs> chilla bring us back around <laughs> and out of the porn industry so so if you want to listen to your porn at, at very high volume oh good <laughs> oh good <laughs> Um, when you, when you want to hear every sound, yes. every minute detail of whatever it might be that you're you're watching. Yeah. So I was looking for a headset that allowed me to jump from device to device and had at least decent audio quality. Which I, don't get me wrong, I've been extremely impressed with the Xbox um, headset. Like the one that the one that Microsoft sells, which is the two dual over the ear headset. But I wanted something that I could bounce back and forth from audio conferences to gaming, whether it be on Xbox, PlayStation, a computer, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I went down to our friends at GameStop and picked up the uh, Plantronics. Uh, hey, I'm an I'm an elite pro buddy for like oh, another go, month and a you, half. You go elite over there. Um, picked up the Rig 500 uh, Pro, and it, it on their website it says it's not universal. But the one I got, I don't think I have the esports edition that I know of, but um, mine is universal. So the device is actually pretty nice. It is a wired headset. Keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty modular, right? One of the big things I wanted was a a wire that removed off the back. So, like, I can pack it up and I don't have to always have the wire dangling because the wire plugs right in. Um, at any time, if you have the older Beats headphones, you'll you'll reminisce about how that works. Um, the other thing that I really liked is the the microphone is the same way. So it it pops down, but it can actually also pull right off the rig, um, and it's detachable, which I thought was pretty nice. And when you pop it up, it actually disconnects and mutes itself which i really like and there's actually a volume control knob right on the device itself so So wait so that is for those on audio can you kind of explain where that is on the device yes so on the the headphone jack piece that would normally plug into your controller or the side of your pc what is that eight eighth inch is that Mm -hmm. eight inch an eighth inch so it's the eighth inch headphone jack. On the other side of it is a knob that rotates, um, and you can actually adjust the volume right there. It doesn't have an independent mic control, um, unfortunately, but it is the overall volume of the actual headphones. Headphones sound exact, really, really good to me, um, and they're actually uh, Dolby Atmos certified and come Ooh. with the free free uh license for atmos on 360 or on xbox one um and across pc and then i don't think the playstation supports atmos to date but maybe when it does it'll it'll um so it'll have no problem supporting it the other thing that i really liked and i forgot to show on the actual cable is on the other side of that knob there's actually a small rubber piece that actually pulls off. Um, almost imagine like kind of like your earbuds cover. Um, what this does, and you can see it almost looks like a small little earpiece. Um, it's actually form fitted for the Xbox and they give you another one that's form fitted for the PlayStation. Mm. Full transparency. It does not make it 
that easy to jump from to device to device. And when I plug it into the PC or the Mac, I just take the take the thing off altogether because um, it adjusts to the curve of the controller. Um, but I was pretty impressed with it from that perspective as well. Awesome. Go check that out. It's Plutronic, Plutronics. Play, Plantronics. Plantronics. Plantronics Rig 500 Pro is yours. And when you go down to the key at the bottom there, it does list it as, as a multi, like that one particularly as a multi uh, version. So yeah. go check it's it not, out. It's not, it is wired, but mm -hmm. you also don't have to worry about charging and, and or running right. out of batteries. Right, exactly. And, and and there are multiple versions of that, again, for different, you know, different different consoles. Like there's specific versions of there, and here's your universal version and everything as well. So go check that out. So I did a thing. I, uh, <laughs> I, I jumped into... Uh, when when somebody tells me, "Hey, it's free and it's the next Fortnite," I gotta check out Apex Legends. And I know I know you you downloaded and you you've yet to play it, but I, I uh, downloaded and, and had some had some render time I had to kill today, so it worked out. So I took the dive and uh, definitely got to go check it out. Um, also, along with it, it, it looks like that in the first week, and this really dropped so quick as well. In the first week of um, Apex Legends, they have 25 million users. Now, I think it's something like 200 million for, for Fortnite. So a long way to go. But again, it's the first week. And I think they clocked about 2, two to 3 million concurrent over the weekend. Um, this is a fun game, you guys. If you're um, maybe intimidated by the building aspect of uh, Fortnite, um, I watch people build towers in seconds and then just like, I don't even understand how you can get to that. But you like a lot of the concepts, like it's a shooting game and uh, it has that kind of battle royale. You know, you jump out of the plane, land on the land on the uh, uh, island and there's, there's a circle, you know, closing in that's going to hurt you if you get out of it. So it kind of draws everybody together. Now, the difference between this is that it actually <laughs> seems to um, it looks like I don't see any other ver any other. Uh, mode than squads so you're automatically put into squads of three in matchmaking that is correct there is no way out of the the, the so three squad i don't hate it so bad also i don't think there's microphone support because there are these um these communication tools like you can mark a point and say hey here's ammo hey here's a gun you know hey there's an enemy over there and then the person talks so it reminds me of old like PlayStation Two Resident Evil Online that used to be able to do that and wouldn't let you like do more than that to communicate. Uh, at least I don't I haven't had a small child calling me names yet. Uh, so 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 far so good, right? Um, <laughs> just like I mute everybody on this Friday. Wait, I don't think so. The one the one thing about this is I think unless you're playing with your buddies, I I'm ninety seven percent sure this supports microphone. Okay. But it's only Maybe. going to support it between your squad. You're not going to hear everyone. Okay, good. Because I mean so I just, unless you get into a squad that's like your buddies with doing. I, I think people are probably pretty hesitant to and, just and it feels so talk. good to drop into a game like this and there's people that are just as much noobs as I am. Well, it's, it's only been out for a week. Yeah. I mean we covered we yeah we talked about this on the show last week and it with it had just launched on tuesday no pre-release no anything else like with the first person i jumped in with there was somebody who had six kills and somebody that had like 70 kills <laughs> right and that was like the highest that i've seen so far and then i'll jump in another one it was like okay that guy has six kills that guy has one kill and then there's me that has like one uh, i was like hopefully we you know you drop in with people that are figuring out how to play. I looked up one time and realized like the one guy was like halfway across the map and the other guy was like the other way. And then the thing was closing in already. And I'm like, okay, that guy's screwed. I don't know what that guy's doing. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> so, so how does that work? So the one, so if you get, if you get downed by another player, mm -hmm. if someone gets to you quick enough, you can be revived. You can be or, revived. You can be, or they can, can grab your banner and take it back to the respawn point. Yes. But what happens if you're outside of the circle of doom? There, there are multiple respawn stations throughout. Okay, it's not. It, it, it's not. Yeah, like but if your body's respawn. outside the circle, I'm not going to run out and get you. Yep, you're screwed. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's part of the so strategy. So that's what that, that's what I was wondering. So the the one question I had that I couldn't figure out from any anything that I read um, was if you were to compare it to Fortnite, 
is the average length of a round the same longer or shorter i was thinking it was going to be longer because of the ability to revive and respawn i think it could be longer um but i have not lasted more than getting down to because you start with about 20 20 squads and i've gotten down to like nine before i get taken out um, okay. when i have a couple people that are actually pretty decent at this uh along with me you know i'm dragging and them down there's classes the thing that i think is cool about this versus fortnite is there's actually classes so yeah, yeah. It, you're not just everyone running around for random um, along with guns. this um they have not really they're gonna have a battle pass system which I, I, I is probably like the seasons in fortnite where you know you get extra stuff for playing uh, uh you know extra goodies for dropping ten dollars every season however many like you know few weeks that was, that is um so but very similar there and again it's um you know it's not exactly call of duty it's fun it's but it's not as cartoony as fortnite so um, there's a couple of cool the zip lines do you can find a zip line and you can ride like up a zip line it's kind of the coolest thing uh so far so uh go check it check it out it's apex legend it is available again for those that maybe missed last week is available for xbox one playstation three or i'm sorry four playstation four and pc and it is free it's again like fortnite you can download it try it out give it a shot and, and unlike fortnite there's a good tutorial that you can what do you what system are you playing on on the xbox how happy have you been uh i've been fine with it okay i i just read i read early on reviews that were saying the the xbox was a little laggy versus the xbox one and i was hoping that wasn't really the case there's, or there, it was no, it wasn't noticeable i mean there, there was there was lags here and there when i was like following somebody but i figured i didn't see that as anything but internet lag okay right? so um but again i have nothing to compare it to so because i've tried playing on my best pc that's not a streaming computer i'm going to have a way worse experience so um and they haven't they have not ruled this out for the switch yet unless you've no, read they have not no they have not so that i'm aware of the switch so katie are we going to get you an apex legend you're going to play some uh first person uh stuff with us no no it requires a new system <laughs> Ah, uh, you, can, you can borrow one of my computers. Yay! We'll throw Windows on that laptop. It'll, it'll handle it just fine. I, I, I think their rec requirements are pretty hefty. That's a newer. That's like a last year MacBook, isn't it? It'll it's be a few fine. Years old. Yeah, it'll be fine. Those things, those things hold up pretty well. <laughs> you have to dual, dual boot it with Windows. That's right. We'll just throw some Windows 10 on, action on there. Ooh. I'm sure we can uh, figure it out. And uh, I have an old Parallels disc laying around. So para <laughs> yeah, don't use Parallels. Oh, geez. No. I've gotten in so much trouble with Parallels. We're like, oh, I'll just do this and do this. Uh, like, I would multitask too hard on a Mac Pro <laughs> with Parallels. It was crazy. But <laughs> anyways, well, uh, speaking of Parallels and my history with that system, uh <laughs> uh so let's talk about history those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it like me and my experience with parallels <laughs> thankfully professor buzzkill makes learning history entertaining and humorous through his uh blog and podcast you can explore it uh with professor buzzkill explore history with B professor buzzkill over at professorbuzzkill.com a lot of great stories articles the back catalog is amazing if you're worried about how well walls work Considering all the recent debates going on, uh, this week's history myth is the effectiveness of walls in history. And he's actually going to be featured over on uh, City Paper, Pittsburgh City Paper's um, uh, streaming radio uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so go check out Professor Buzzkill's Facebook page for event details for that as well. Go check out everything. And, and that's Wednesday morning for those that are catching us a little later in the week. And I'm sure uh, I believe that is also podcasted as well over on uh, City Paper's feeds. Uh, but no, start everything off at ProfessorBuzzkill.com. And a good shout out to a friend of the network here at Sorgatron Media and the Awesome Cast. Okay, let's take a peek at what's going on out there. You guys, of course, submit a lot of stories throughout the week at uh, on the um, Awesome Cast Facebook page. Uh, a Facebook group, I'm sorry. Uh, so as I load this back up, uh, give a shout out to... Doug put one out here. There's a lot of video this week, guys. Uh, a lot of video announcements. And uh, Doug pointed out the one for uh, LinkedIn Live. Now, so far from what I have seen of this, because I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if it's rolled out. Like, I haven't seen anything for it 
like in my LinkedIn app. I don't know, Katie, if you have, but it's it's live video mm -hmm. in LinkedIn. I don't know if you knew you wanted that, yep. but they have it. Uh, <laughs> so they debuted LinkedIn Live. It's a new live uh, video broadcasting service. It looks strangely like other live things like maybe we're on right now. Uh, so, <laughs> um, let's see. And they did do have, and uh, Hey, you know what? Maybe we'll be broadcasting on here soon. Cause it does say it, it, it will, um, in include uh compatibility here with Wirecast, Witcher Studio, Wowza Media Systems, Social Live, Brand Live. So we, we can completely push the awesome cast to LinkedIn. And what makes more sense than that, to be honest? Jeez. It, it's interesting. Cause I'm, I'm hoping this, I feel like the LinkedIn normal people or the majority of LinkedIn people aren't the people that scroll their Facebook feed as much. Okay. So it'll be interesting so, and, or, and or run out and subscribe to like YouTube channels or maybe, and, and maybe I'm off here, but I feel like it's an older demographic from a majority stake. What'll be interesting is does this bring younger professionals to the platform? I appreciate that I don't get spammed with random fake person accounts on here, mm -hmm. but really bringing that professional, I feel like there's going to be an opportunity for, for like you with Sorgatron media to almost do small clip advertising kind of like what you're doing over on Facebook and being able to reach a better audience with that. I've actually been doing that. So when we like a couple weeks ago, like Katie had a really good social media tip and I shared that over there and it seemed to get a little, that's actually the thing that I think that got a little bit of response on there. <laughs> um, and, and I intend to do the same with a couple things we already talked about on this show. Um, so here's, here's my thoughts on it. Many people like our age and younger mm -hmm. tech people, you know, on the, on the internet and all the stuff, um, go to an office and usually Facebook is locked down for things. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is not because it's seen as a professional networking site that is valuable resource to business professionals. So if your audience is not able to come to a Facebook live under the circumstances, I think that this is going to be a great alternative for daytime production type of stuff you, you you create a very valid point and i'm interested to actually now go to work and try this because we have i have the same problem um i can't get to facebook i can't get to youtube i mean we have to we have to ask for specific you sub sections of youtube to be unblocked so to be able to see like how to's and tutorials mm -hmm. and major corporations youtubes what i'm interested in since this is LinkedIn's owned by Microsoft. Is this going to like a, a Microsoft Streams or Teams um, bro broadcast segment? Because if that is, if it's going to like a subsite of another Microsoft section, I would also get blocked from that, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's not on. So it says it's running on uh, Microsoft Azure, if that means anything to you <clears throat> yeah. um, for, for that aspect. I know what Azure is. Uh, but, but, I, I think maybe this does serve because if you can get to LinkedIn and say, you know, a Google event or TechCrunch event or, you know, a Samsung event, like instead of being on YouTube, Facebook, that could be blocked on your corporate level. Now you have access to it without being an issue. And yes. I would think there's not going to be a lot of um, time wasting things. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like just because of the audience, like there will be more like, honestly, if I, start throwing my stream out to LinkedIn like we do all the other platforms, like for the replays, that's probably the most unprofessional thing. And it's still not, a, you know, too off the mark with that because it's what we do, right? It's our business. So um, it'll be interesting to see that. And, 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 and it is definitely something we're going to be looking for and see how we can implement with what we're already doing here. I mean, it's a new, it's a new audience basically, right? And I'm interested to see who, who brings their announce their major announcements? Like we see a lot of streams from Samsung, Apple, Google, Microsoft, etc. Mm. I'm hoping that we see this be kind of the centerpiece for those types of announcements, where it's kind of a, oh, I just have to go here and worry about getting the, this one place versus 
oh, go to Engadget or go to 9to5Mac and then scrape the site to find the link to hope that I can get there to find out that it's just a live blog with pictures. Right. Uh, Ponder's actually asking, uh, again, for his own business usage, um, does it does it say if they can do, can do multiple outputs like Facebook at the same time? Now, I think the answer to that, as long as they can do an RTMP, RMTP, one of the streams, <laughs> I got the right letters, I don't know if they're in the right order, um, then you could. And I would imagine if Restream can also connect to LinkedIn video, um, if it has all these other functions, and I'm sure it can eventually, right? So if you can do that, then you can use things like we use to make like we're going to Facebook, we're going to LinkedIn, we're I'm sorry, we're going to Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, and a few others right now for this feed as I speak. Um, I think it's just a matter of time before LinkedIn gets um, included in that, and then then you could do that. You could be you know a um, you know a Sorgatron Media Psychic Media Service and do your tip show for the week, and that goes to all the relevant platforms, right, in a widespread. Um, so, and now it's just a matter of, okay, which one do you pay attention to the chat? Right. Like we do here when we say, hey, Facebook's where we do this. You know, that's where most, most of the people show up. That's where we're going to do the interaction point. So, um, it's interesting. Katie, do, do you see any advantages to this? I know we have, you're more in that scare biz, and I don't know if you guys are hanging out on LinkedIn quite as much. No, we need to be out. We do well on there. When mm-hmm. we do put things on there, people seem to like it. And I'm just, when we start talking about LinkedIn and like who's on there, it reminds me of the conversation we had a while back where people had the foot fetishes. Do you remember that on LinkedIn? And you were able to see that oh, they were liking and yeah. they were very, exe- there was a lot of executives that were on LinkedIn, liking yeah. very like questionable things. And commenting questionable yes. things. So this does open up a brand new issue with yeah. that. But I mean, which you're, anything does. Your, your algorithm much, must be much different than mine because I didn't get any of well, that. No, no, that wasn't the issue. That wasn't the issue. The, the issue wasn't that you're following things, but you're, say, in Pittsburgh and following executives in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. because you want to interact with executives in Pittsburgh. And then you find out said high level executives in Pittsburgh are liking and responding in creepy ways yep. to lingerie models on LinkedIn. Mm hmm. Huh. You know oh, that I thing. Didn't. You know that thing on on Twitter where like, hey, if you go and like a porn star and and heart tweets and things, anybody can see that. Yes. That for LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's. I mean, it's nothing other than that. So if you friend these people, then you, what do you see in your field? So and so like this, and then your feed gets weird, mm-hmm. and it's because of those people. So. Uh, <laughs> so. There's a lot more people on LinkedIn than we're probably giving credit for. Yeah, there is. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, it's not a, well, a variety of people. It's not a variety of. <laughs> I, I get friended by rappers and pro wrestlers all the time myself. On LinkedIn? Sure. On LinkedIn, yes. Yeah. Wow. That's a thing because I've done stuff in those fields, let's say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it, you have a professional network in those fields. It makes sense. It, it does. I, and honestly, I do. So, you know, I, I get promoters and stuff on there. We don't do a lot of business on there or anything, but I, they pop up and. And I, I see their feeds, and it's not too weird, but, you know, it's fine. You know, no foot fetishes over here, guys. Uh, <laughs> All right. If, if we're being honest here. Not I've, that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, right. I was going to say, if we're being honest here, I've seen Dutter's Facebook feed. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's I, true. Yeah, or my Instagram feed. Yeah, I think your Instagram was even yeah. more fun. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fun with the, just the between wrestling and burlesque and just horror and <laughs> cats. Uh, <laughs> goes with the industry. But speaking of Dave Potter out there, uh, he shared an article with us from over on astronomy.com. The International Space Station's new 3D printer recycles old plastic into custom tools. Uh, that's cool. Like, I think everything's plastic up there, isn't it? For the most part. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, make it. It's um, you know, you can't really get that wrench if you're up there and need it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's actually what it says: a ratchet wrench, 3D printed aboard the International Space Station. I mean, this is kind of the answer where we, we've kind of expected for a while, right? Of there being you know, kind of replenishable things um, with 3D printers. Like that's going to solve our kind of space race issues when we land on mars and forgot to pack the uh, uh our our uh, uh uh english uh wrenches 
so when is a 3D printer going to be able to print me a drink that I can actually drink, kind of like, you know, Star Trek? It's not a food printer. We're talking about plastic here. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's a leap. Well, I mean, what we've had that. There's, wasn't there like a pizza printer or something we talked about a while ago? But uh, oh, yeah. yeah. This yeah. isn't Back to the Future Part 2. We're not rehydrating the little pizza hut pizza. <laughs> if only, man. If only. I mean, it, what's of- interesting, so what's interesting, and I didn't get to read the article, um, can they recycle? So they're using recycled old plastic, but can they recycle what they just made? I don't see why not. Because because what's interesting is think, think about it this way too: is there's only so much space to store things on the space station. Like you run out of room for like tons of tools. So if oh I need I need this wrench and this ratchet and this screwdriver for the next two weeks, and then. After that, I need a whole different other set of tools to put them back through the machine, melt them down, and re reuse that into uh, another tool. Skim, Sounds skimming pretty cool the idea. Skimming the article, that really does seem like what they're doing. Um, it, it seems like the, the purpose of it, because they're talking about this is going to cut down on their supplies that they have to send up and everything, and uh, and also uh, help uh, that waste you know doesn't doesn't add up up there. So. Amazon's two-day delivery to the space station is, is just going down the tubes with you don't recycled think, plastic 3D printers. You don't think they're working on a 3D printing scheme from Amazon in some some lab somewhere? I'm sure they are, but I was just thinking of the two-day shipping to space. <laughs> um, also, uh, Alex Cars out there on the West Coast, he says his awesome thing of the week is his new Mac Mini he finally bought. Uh, bring it. Uh, bring on the new video and design products projects. Maybe we should bump his ad up to now. Uh, and hopefully, uh, gaming streaming. He's a little nervous since he ended up uh, with a base model with an i3 CPU. Although you got like the recent i3, so I think you're okay for the most part, right? I mean, I think like his i3 is still better than my i7 from 2013. What would be interesting is that has Thunderbolt three with video doesn't it so he could actually buy an external gpu mm, there you what go he's what he's doing he could probably he would probably be more beneficial of, with an external gpu and yeah it's going to be half the cost of the imac it's but, infinite or the mac mini infinitely infinitely more upgradable that way now yep. so i think you're going to do okay because you can legitimately like offload some of that uh power especially if your video gets a little high end so um, and also, uh, Riz, let us know. And I saw this. Man, this just this thing was $100, the PlayStation Classic. It has about 20 games from the original PlayStation, like, you know, on CDs. Like, the first one's from, like, 1996. So we're talking, like, Tekken, or not even Tekken, Battle Arena to Shinden, and, like, Jumping Flash, right? Uh, you know, that era. It is $40 at Walmart right now. Dude, yeah. Do you remember when Grand Theft Auto was like a top done down? Yeah, isn't like, that included? I don't. Is that included? I think that, it's on there. I, yeah, I remember playing that on PC, and then it almost immediately came out for PlayStation. Yeah, I remember I playing? I was like, "Oh, cool, we can do whatever we want. It's top down, but whatever. That's cool. It's 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 1998." Um, and and you know how many people like play Grand Theft Auto, Grand, Grand Theft Auto three and probably don't don't even realize. <laughs> You know, um, oh, I don't know what the, the list of games is, but I mean, that's crazy since it, um, I mean, versus the Nintendo where you can barely get one at, at like, like 60 or $80 and, and the PlayStation one just, I don't know, just different philosophies, I think with, um, I, I, the I think companies. part of the problem is, is that their the game selection wasn't as good. And the price was high in comparison to others. Right. So remember, this came up, this came out before Christmas. This was like yes. a hey, try to find this on Black Friday type deal. And when Nintendo dropped the or dropped and did special deals on the Switch and the Nintendo new 3DS alongside um, Sony dropping a hundred dollars off the price of their ps4 and spider with included free spider-man i just feel like it blew this hardware out of the water at a hundred dollar price point i was gonna i was gonna ask katie if she's picking up on this but do you have anything with an hdmi 
What do you mean? Do I have anything? Like yeah. That? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Katie doesn't mm-hmm. have a TV with an HDMI. Nope. So she's actually better off just getting an old PlayStation One. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. If you, it, Katie, if you want, I have a, um, I think it's a twenty-inch flat panel. It's only seven twenty p, so you're not going to get your ten eighty. But it has an integrated DVD player and Ooh. it has HDMI. It has Ooh. HDMI in on it. So if you want it, it's yours. Ooh, I'll take it. But, I, but I'm, I'm gonna, I want to see, I wanna see your like large collection of old hardware plugged into it. <laughs> a collection of old hardware. Well, uh, that'll be like the second combo. You gave me a combo with the. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because I, 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 I gave her the VCR combo that used to be yes. in the studio. So this this actually has like <laughs> everything back from the dawn of time to current, right? It has. <laughs> It has. It's a collection of technology, but it, it's interesting because it has a ton of inputs in it. It has coax with HD ten- antenna capability. It has the old RCA red and white. It has, um, I think, I think it has the component video. It has a VGA port and an HDMI port on it. Wow, you can use it for a monitor for you can use it for a computer old- monitor. But it's only 720, so you're not going to get oh. like 1024. <laughs> See? Yeah, it's going to be. Man, yeah, you are going to be rocking 2005 with that thing. I know. This is so exciting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know what? We need to get you a 360 with an HD, HD DVD uh, player. <laughs> I, I was this close to grabbing one from a thrift store when I was in Portland. This close. And I'm like, eh, do I, why would I do this? Because. You you know get one of those and just like become a collector of like I'm gonna own every HD DVD that there was because there's not many. So what did the and that, that's an interesting question. So that's the one thing that they said for people that were still playing the old Nintendo, having an old tube TV was important because it just didn't look right and the refresh yep. rates were off and there was all kinds. So I don't remember the original PlayStation what output did it didn't do hdmi did it? no 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 it was rca maybe maybe component um but- so so if you were a fan of it i mean you may not I don't have a good quality I, i'd be curious i'd be curious to see how that goes uh, if that makes it makes any difference but anyways hey time for a shout out guys to our good friends at slice on broadway uh celebrating uh, i'm sorry supporting uh yeah and celebrating uh pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here up the street in beachview the og the original uh over here as well as pnc park carnegie and the east end go check them out you'll get hungry too supporting us with that pepperoni pizza every week uh, we really appreciate them give a shout out to our good friends check them out slice on broadway.com pgh underscore slice on the twitter and let them know that you are uh hungry (laughs) (laughs) as i am getting now as well so anyways so let's let's get into it so we we talked a little bit about um linkedin live but i also want to talk about the other live video um and then we have to talk about pitch deck for a moment here um so did i not include that one too jeez i am really bad no no there wait nope that's not it is it in there Anyways, Amazon, oh, there it is. Amazon Ooh. is, it, it's weird because the article says how Amazon is um, copying brick and mortar with this play. And that's not how, I mean, I, I just don't make that connection in my head with this. Um, Amazon co- Amazon is started a, 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 a Amazon Live. And from what I was hearing on, on another cast, um, they were saying that this is not the first play in the video that Amazon has done. So basically, if you are a retailer on Amazon.com, and any of us can download the app, actually, you can um, put out videos on their service. It, it really kind of feels like they're they're running off of Twitch, just in TV technology here, to be honest. Um, so to the point where like, I, I was watching one where it was somebody's like uh, iPhone cases, and they're on a shoot for a new project, right? Uh, to a new product and there was like and here's our and here's our lineup over here of these things this guy's selling some kind of um oh anti-aging marine collagen oh boy this is gonna get fun <laughs> so uh I, I, and i wonder and, and i want to dive in a little more like is there something like you know chilla when you talk about a product here 
you know, like, uh, you know, these headphones that you were just talking about. Is that something that we could go over and take a clip and throw over here? But I mean, again, everything is live. Everything is. Um, I thought you could pre-record to this. I didn't think it had to be live. That'd be good. That'd be good. Um, so, and once again, can we just push awesome cats to something like this with all the stuff we talk about? I think the key part of it's going to be to make sure you link up what you're covering. So then you get monetization on the product. You got a, uh, uh, you have a Vermont teddy bears and I think it's just this girl like hugging a bear. Um, <laughs> yes. So, I mean, ideally like the big examples that they show are very QVC, and, and I think, like, depending on, you know, this is something that, you know, I listened to a little bit of Gary Vaynerchuk, and he, you know, he, he's been big on the, hey, if you sell something, why the hell aren't you on Periscope pretty much treating it like QVC? He's done that with his wine, actually. And now this is, like, going to the right place, right? Um, you got an upcoming stream section. You got a live of, like, I see there's this one that's doing, and I think this is by Amazon itself. That's a uh, Today's Tech Deals. Um, where they go live for a while here and, and talk about what's going on here. Like they they have like projectors and uh, um, things like that. So, I mean, this is, this is really, it, it feels like an extension of like a lot of what we've been doing with production around here um, that you can apply in this. I mean, we were talking with somebody um, a, a year or so ago that does jewelry and they were basically looking to do these kind of live feeds to promote their jewelry. Um, and now you can build it right into Amazon uh, for something like this. So I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Two big video plays. I, Go ahead. I, I feel like it's it's less QVC because I feel like QVC is so commercial and you have to have an agreement with them. And there's there's a whole process to getting on QVC mm -hmm. versus I feel like this is like a cross between. I, I feel like it's a hybrid of QVC and Shark Tank. Like, here's my product. Come, <laughs> Shark Tank. <laughs> come buy it. But I don't need all these people to financially back me unless I have a problem keeping up with, with inventory. It's, it's a pretty pretty cool idea. I'll be interested to see where it goes. And can you advertise for other people's and do reviews if you're not the owner or that's, you're the one that's actually selling that's where it can get pretty crazy for sure um you know versus just having a look on your site uh katie are you looking at this what do you think um you know what do you, what do you think of this as a as an option as i know you you look at kind of new ways to sell things in your marketing side not exactly for scarehouse probably unless you really want to sell you know i don't know the gear over there oh, my zombie zombie hug <laughs> stickers zombie, zombie hug. Oh, my stickers yes. <laughs> sticker hut oh my gosh no i i <laughs> it's fun it's just so ridiculous amazon just does things and you just have to laugh sometimes because it's like oh okay this is where your mind went <laughs> like oh that's what you think is the next thing but it, it isn't really they're kind of throwing a scatter shot of of ideas too yeah which they kind of need to do to figure out that what the next thing is mm -hmm. so but where i don't think amazon what i don't think amazon can get away with is i do not think they were going are going to fare well if they go the google route and do these kind of one-off things and then decide two years later, yeah, that didn't, we're not, we're not making enough money off of it and we're just going to scrap it. I think Google can get away with it because they're viewed as that's their thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look at the backlash of Google reader. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if Amazon can, could continually get away with spinning something up and then, trashing it and then spinning something up and trashing it i think their population is more the dependency type and not the change type mm -hmm. um so let's go from that from another amazon and then katie i want you to close out with these a uh, couple interesting stories that uh that popped up here over the weekend uh chilla oh, what, what's going on with amazon and your wi-fi so amazon bought euro which surprised Surprised me, but didn't surprise Man, me. They're buying everything that Twit advertises. Have you noticed this? <laughs> yes. They have Ring Doorbell and now this. Yeah, and where I, I think it makes sense. Where I get concerned is I, f I would find it surprising if Amazon wasn't doing a little bit of peeking behind the, mm. the curtain. 
Just, I mean, we we know they've we know they've gotten caught with uh, recordings off of people's ring doorbell and their cameras. We know um, that they use advertising and for and information from their fire devices. And just the review, uh, Eero is a um, Wi-Fi router, and the idea is that it creates a mesh network in your home. So if you have a home where it get like you put a router in one corner of the house and you can't get to the rest of the house. You put these through the house to make one big network that's consistent, right? And uh, I think the key to that, though, is it's super easy for the end user to configure. Because if you're old school and just had a bunch of access points and getting them to work correctly without too much collision and overlap in the frequency and you want to maintain the same network name around the house... Um, and the, the way that those access points hand off, like if I'm on a, if I'm doing this hangout, right, I want to be able to walk around my house um, and not drop this call. And that takes, in the old days, that took some ingenuity and thought process. Today, that takes, hey, go buy this and hit, can hit, hit a button and it auto kind of takes care of itself. Um, where I worry is our the major manufacturers of these are now Google and Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be interested to see. And and some of the other ones are almost subscription-based. So you have to continue. You have to pay like a yearly subscription to keep them updated and going. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. But again, it, Ring had some issues with security, but I think that preceded um, Amazon's involvement. Um, but uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that goes in the whole trust that everybody's having with them. Katie, bring us bring us home with some positive news. <laughs> All righty. Uh, first one. Hilarious. Um, I saw this on Facebook. A digital bill- billboard in Odessa malfunction in the fog, um, convincing a motorist of number of motorists not only were they living in the matrix but it was being run by windows 98 <laughs> it's just it's a nighttime and it's foggy and all you see in the sky is this error code very large in the sky. which is the giant billboard error coded and and very yeah and very it looks like windows. a windows 98 yep. in the fog and it's kind of scary and eerie is, is, is crash override still up because someone needs to add <laughs> this to it yeah we do yeah we do like for some reason i can't log out of it which is appropriate <laughs> You should put the screen capture of that error up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Instagram might be uh, expanding yeah. a little bit, huh? So we might be getting uh, some sort of chat and uh, direct messages on your computer with Instagram. Whoa. So it's kind of like Messenger, like on in- Facebook, but for Instagram. Well, so many people live in this. Yeah. I guess it makes sense. Um, I'm trying to live in it a little bit more. Um, I actually did book an interview through Instagram the other day. Oh, nice. um, so I mean, you know, kind of realizing like, Hey, people are here. I see them just like something like a few minutes ago. So it makes sense to just kind of reach out to them. Uh, so, Oh, so the person I book looks like he's straight out of a game of Thrones episode. Yes. Uh, but gray wolf can't wait to chat with you next week. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as long as they keep like my favorite function right now is still the random gifts. As long as I can still oh, send I keep a... forgetting to try that. Oh, just, yeah. Just oh, random, gif- random gifts. Go into Instagram and go into your um, messenger, like direct messenger um, in Instagram. And then there's an option at the bottom uh, to select gifts. And then when you do it, you can select random gifts. So what you do is you put in a word. So you go into your little tri- flying paper thing in the corner, pick a person, hit that plus sign, hit gift, and then type in something. And then... Uh, you can get a random gif of like uh, pretty much anything you want to put in there. Like, uh, what do I like to put in here? Boop, boop, boop. And then on the left-hand side, you'll see random with a couple a set of dice and then you hit it and then something random pops up. And sometimes it's really good and it's right on. And then sometimes you're just, you look like such a weirdo because that's what, oh, uh, how do I do this? I have it. It was also weird because it's sideways. Oh wait, no, it right sides it up. Oh, cool. Uh, so how do I do this? Okay, so in your messenger on Instagram. I'm in my messenger. Okay, you're, 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 ignore you're... ignore the gross Hello Kitty that I sent Katie earlier. It's adorbs. Yes. Um, so then you're in there, and then down at the bottom, in the right hand corner, you'll see a plus sign, and that's how you get into your gifts in the messenger of um Instagram. Type in any word you want. Like I'm gonna type in poop, 
and then hit. Damn, that's what I was gonna put. Hey, we're in the same. Mic. So, do, do I pick? Wait, do I pick a person to send a message to, yes. or do I? You don't send random um, gifts to just anybody. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, you're just gonna go in, and yeah, so you just pick a person that you're having a conversation with, or if you want to end think conversation. Mine's popping up over here. Yeah. Oh, there's a random. Okay. Oh, it's like dice. Yeah. So go hit the plus sign, the bottom right hand corner there. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting. I might not be updated on here. Oh, because you can. Do you not hit the the plus sign? Plus hit the, sign. the there's a little. The so I just typed in. I typed in retro. See the plus sign on the far right in the bottom there. Mm-hmm. The black button. That's not live. Oh, I shoot. went. I went check it on my phone. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go go on your phone. Go on your phone. Anyways, go ahead and explain it to him. Yeah. So you're gonna go in there and then you just you, it's Giphy. So or Jiffy. Uh-huh. Um, and then you just type in a word and then the dice pop up and you could just random stuff will pop up. And it's awesome. Like I said, sometimes it's really on and, and it's and hilarious. You say you are having complete conversations with just the random gifts based on words. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, yes. That, that's my life now. It's just, as well as they would work. Yeah. It was pretty hilarious. And I mean, like I said, sometimes they're just like spot on. And sometimes you're like, I look like such a weird. Like, guy. wait, is this what popped up when you, you did poop? Yep. Like this collection of penguins. penguins? Yep. Oh, oh, okay. And you're able to tell like when you're, an, you're a messenger, <laughs> you'll see it in the top left hand corner of the gift. It, you'll see the dice. So mm. you're able to go, okay, this person didn't mean to actually send me eggplants or whatever <laughs> i just now i just want to be like yeah what else pops up for this word Ta-da. yeah see it's a little weird <laughs> <laughs> that is a banana in a hot tub yep. and is that a dog girl kissing at it or yes, something something that, a, what did you type for that uh, you don't want to know oh okay but um, yeah you can tell in the top left hand corner that it's a random gift so you don't have to feel as awkward the the weather's getting pretty bad here, so <laughs> if I lose if you lose me, I may have gotten sucked oh, into it. Oh wow, it is getting wet out there. Uh, well, decks. on that note, hey, want to give a quick shout out before we lose power here to our oh, friend. Well, wow, it's getting yeah. real bad here. Jeez. Yeah, like I just I could I could hear yeah, like, like is the office flooding? Is the, the office is about to flood, so we need to hurry. And uh, and and Aaron's checking his office too to make sure it's not flooding. It looks like. <laughs> with the windows down <laughs> um but anyways a shout out to our friend alex cars who's putting together puzzles of design and media from branding to print and digital projects you can go check them out at alexcars.media or alexandercars.com k-a-h-r-s dot media and check them out like i said he got hey he's got a new computer and he's ready to use it with your for your project. He does a lot of great work with us, and I, I think he's uh, going to be kicking off a new project that uh, we're working on together as well. We have had our initial meeting. Ooh, bring him in. Some... He's got the information, and we're gonna roll. So there you go. Websites, T-shirt designs, DVD uh, covers, and so much more. Go check him out, Alex Cars. Dot media thanks alex for supporting the show and being in the chat room every week it's really cool uh that you're hanging out with us and uh can't wait to i'll be in california in early april i'll be hanging out with alex probably watching some wrestling of some sort uh so I'll have some fun there uh, the put- <laughs> i'm sorry I-, I feel like out of all of that i put the most random gif in there mm-hmm. and it just keeps wiggling at me uh-huh. anyway <laughs> Uh, go check out of course um thursday morning we will be live here with the pittsburgh current podcast i do not know the guest I imagine it won't be another porn star, but um, th- that was fun. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Aaron's crossing his fingers off camera. Uh, but <laughs> you missed the last one. Uh, anyways, um, but no, they always have great conversations there with a lot of different people. Um, go check out PittsburghCurrent.com for what's happening with that. And we will be back next week for the awesome cast. Uh, Ron Krause will be joining us. Crazy Krause will be in studio with us hanging out as well. Your your gadget guru associate over there, Chilla. And That's why I decided to stay home this week. So I'm in, I'm in studio next week with him. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and also, I believe the week after that, we are confirmed with Kip Mueller. He's got a cool startup uh, event coming up here in the near future. So we're going to have him in to talk about that and what's going on in the startup world uh, around the Pittsburgh area. So I'm uh, looking forward to have him in. I can't remember if we've had Kit on before. I feel like we have. We had to have. I'm pretty sure we have. It's been a while, though. Yeah, probably, probably catch remotely. Up. I don't think he's ever been in like the old studio or the new studio yet. So, uh, so it'll work out well. So, 
look out for that and uh, other guests coming up. Uh, in, if there's anybody in the Pittsburgh area you think should be on the show hanging out with us or we didn't do an interview with any of the companies out there, we might have a few more of those coming very shortly um, or some other technology related things around the network. Uh, go uh, uh, let us know awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and awesomecast on the Twitter or via the Facebook page. Katie! Got a new podcast. Yep, Scarlet's has a new podcast up. Yes. What are you talking about over there? Uh, it's Nino, Nino, Nicole, and myself just chatting about uh, just kind of what we're up to, what's going on, what happens in the off season, just that kind of fun stuff. Good. Good. It's fun, informal. We like. Oh, you're just laying back and hanging out. Yeah, and we're not doing anything. Not we're doing just... anything. <laughs> and thinking about Halloween's gone past. Yeah, it's yes. fine. <laughs> uh, chilla, chilla tech dot net. Chill on the Twitter is John Chill on the Facebook. Yes. Hit him up for techie questions. And also, he's hanging out in the group as well. Uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, if you want to hit me up and see my travels. I uh, randomly, with about ooh, less than 48 hours mo- notice, ended up in Long Island, New York, to stream a uh, be a camera operator on a live stream at Bleacher Report for a, a fight. Um, man, you have not lived until you've watched MMA in person. <laughs> it is something else. More interesting, interesting for boxing uh, than boxing, that's for sure. Producer Missy, you can plug something, whatever you want, since you have a microphone now. Yeah, I don't know exactly what to be plugging at this you point. You should plug something. Well, side what's going on? Final. Sidekick Media Services. That's Katie us. and I have been really busy with uh, you have been. with a new mm-hmm. client, which is really awesome. Uh, we'll be sharing some of that content here probably out in the next week and two. Uh, other than that, yeah, I, I live in the studio. <laughs> we practically do. Let's be honest about this. Uh, we were very barely at home. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody that's been with us on the chat room. I know Dave Potter's been out there, as well as John Carmen and my mom and everybody else throughout the night. Uh, thank you for checking in uh, with us. Shout out to BC Steel as well. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.